Well, I had one question about... Um, I hear you saying that we're fine just the way we are, and other, te other teachers say, you know, we're perfect just as we are. And there are times when I'm not connected where I have, where I don't feel who I, I don't feel myself, I don't feel perfect, I don't feel authentic. Um, and, but I, I like the idea that I am perfect in those moments too. But you see, it is only an idea for you. Mm -hmm. it's, I like the idea mm -hmm. of that, but we want you to know the feeling of that. Yeah. And that's, that's what this game of the vibrational meter is about. In other words, the idea is over here, but how I feel is over here. And so mm -hmm. you've got to feel your way there. And so we, we attempt to bring you closer to it by saying things like, you never get it done. And today we said to you that here you are and here's where you want to be and you'll move there, but then your desire will move too. In other words, we want you to embrace the idea of your perfect incompletion because incompletion and eternal are the same word. Can you hear that? Yes. If you could be complete, if any of us could be complete, then we, could, then we would be finished. We couldn't, there could not be more. Mm -hmm. In our incompletion, there is the promise of the future. There is the promise of the eternal nature of that which we are. And mm -hmm. so what you, want to, what you really want to do is be satisfied but eager for more. I, I love who I am and I'm understanding that I'm evolving. So I'm not unhappy in my incompletion. I'm eager for more to be. I'm, I'm not satisfied in the sense that I'm done, but I'm satisfied in the sense that I'm in a good place. Mm -hmm. I'm satisfied in the sense that I'm in control, and I'm satisfied in the sense of knowing that I will continue to evolve. In other words, you just have to find, find your way, feel your way into that. So a nice state of being is eager, optimum state of creating on the leading edge. Eager. Satisfied, eager, satisfied, eager, mm -hmm. satisfied, eager, satisfied, eager, satisfied. Optimum experience. Now, most people are eager, satisfied, dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. Satisfied, dissatisfied, satisfied, dissatisfied, satisfied, eager. Satisfied, eager, dissatisfied. In other words, you just sort of, yes. and the reason that you slop around is because you're not paying attention to the way you feel and you haven't given yourself permission to feel on purpose. And you don't know the power of your feeling. In other words, most are feeling in response to what they're observing. And that's why your life frightens you. You're afraid you'll observe something that will make you feel like this. You're afraid that you will observe something that will make you feel terrible and that you, will, you fear that you'll be out of control of feeling good again. And by the time you leave here today, we think that those fears will be history because you'll come to understand that it does not matter where you are, you can choose a feeling of greater relief. And think about it. Think about what that means. Wherever you are, if your mantra is, I'm going to make the best of it, I'm going to make the best of it, I'm going to make the best of it, then don't you have to move into a better place? And don't you have to move into a better place? And don't you have to move in? And isn't it logical that if you've made a determination and shown yourself that you can make the best of it? Sometimes we see you deliberately making the worst of it. And we understand why you do it. You do it because every part of you knows you're supposed to feel good. And when you don't, every part of you knows there's something really wrong. And it's almost a self-surviving mechanism to try to explain why it's not the way you know it should be. As Jerry and Esther were having their motor coach repaired, they went back to the factory where it was born and uh, scheduled a week for tweaking it back into alignment on a number of uh, fronts and uh, uh, the first day no one even gave any attention to their coach at all and Esther was frustrated because they'd moved out of it they'd moved into a hotel it was much less convenient to be in the hotel and no one was even uh, giving it attention and about halfway through the second day they had four days scheduled halfway through the second day uh, they were just sort of dabbling at it. And Esther had prepared a long list and she had taken care to point out to them that the things that really mattered were at the top of the list. And the things that didn't matter so much were at the bottom of the list, hoping to inspire them to get going on the important things. And they looked back at her as if to say, oh, we've seen dozens of lists like this. We've seen thousands of lists like this. Uh, we'll do what we can do and it might please you and it might not, but 
our job is not to please you, was sort of the attitude that she was feeling from them. And so about the beginning of the third day, Esther was feeling her hopefulness. Well, we have to tell you, it was pessimistic hopefulness. <laughs> That's where she started because she'd been there before. <laughs> And she had not done anything to clean up her vibration. So that's where she started. And then she began observing them. And her observation caused her pessimistic hopefulness to move to irritation, to frustration, mm -hmm. to um, anger, to revenge. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, she was feeling pretty unhappy because, and then she kept, she was beating the drum and the drum she was beating was to justify why she was feeling like she was feeling. Mm. In other words, it embarrassed her to feel so bad. She's a teacher of allowing well-being. It embarrassed her to feel that way. It embarrassed her to have Jerry see her like that. But then it felt even more like she should beat the drum of justification about the way she felt. And so she began explaining to Jerry, we're halfway through the week and they have not even started. He was unmoved. <laughs> so she beat the drum a little louder. They repaired the water pump because it was making too much noise and now we have no water at all. They glued the mirror on the wall that kept falling off and it has fallen off again. They repaired the rear view camera, said there was a loose wire, but it still doesn't work. <laughs> Jerry's beginning to be moved now <laughs> as Esther is beating the drum of justification. So what we're getting at here, as you listen in, you certainly must agree with Esther that she is justified in beating the drum. And you certainly can understand why she would want to do that because after all, she's over here and she wants to be over there. And whose fault is that? In other words, if they were behaving in the way that they should behave, she would be in this place where she belongs. And it is so irritating that the universe does not cooperate and give you in every moment every single thing you want and that you would be relegated to a vibration that feels less, that is less than who you are. In other words, it is terrible not to be enlightened when you know about enlightenment. It is terrible to be depriving yourself of well-being being when you know and have tasted well-being. We understand why you might want to beat the drum of exaggeration, but we have to tell you it will only hold you in that holding pattern. In other words, the brightest, sharpest, most efficient, most effective people are right out there working on somebody else's motorhome and they cannot walk through your door when you're beating the drum of what is. In other words, it keeps changing, but it keeps changing to the same. And so until you get that, until you get that nothing is more important than that you feel good, that's the only motivation that we know. And when that motivation turns to inspiration, in other words, when you discover the sweetness of being summoned by what feels good, rather than trying to push away what feels bad, then you have it, you see. Yes. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, indeed.